In the Cretaceous period, the air was dominated by giant held giraffes, the Asdarkids. Asdarkidae was a family of pterodactyloid pterosaurs. They were one of the last of pterosaur kind. The Asdarkids flourished in the late Cretaceous period, and near the end, they produced the biggest animals to ever roam the skies. Some Asdarkids were as big as house cats, others as big as fighter jets. The largest of them all was Quetzalcoatlus Northropi. Its wingspan measured 10 to 12 meters and it was as tall as a giraffe. Most, if not all, Asdarkids had a crest on top of their heads. We don't know the exact purpose of these crests, but they were probably used for display. The body proportions of Asdarkids were very weird. They had long legs for terrestrial living and very long necks for a pterosaur. Their heads were gigantic and their bodies were small. The neck bones were elongated and stiff, which means that they weren't very mobile. The first Asdarkid described, called Asdarko, gave the name to the group. The group was then called Asdarkinae and was a part of the superfamily Pteranodontidae. The grouping is now called Asdarkidae and it's a superfamily within Pterodactyloidae. This order was in turn part of the clade Pterosauria. This clade is in an even bigger grouping with Dinosauria called Ornithodira. Asdarkids lived all over the globe including Antarctica. Before I explain how Asdarkids took flight, I need to address something. Yes, Asdarkids could fly. If people tell you otherwise, they're wrong. They weren't too heavy or stocky for taking off. Of course, the first stage of their flight is the takeoff. But how did the giraffe-sized animal do this? Well, until fairly recently, scientists thought that pterosaurs took flight like modern birds, but this is not true. This is where the quad launch comes in. This idea suggests that pterosaurs used all four of their limbs. They would first jump and then push themselves from the ground with their wings. Bats use the same technique. After that, the pterosaurs would flap their wings to get higher above the ground. After that, the bigger pterosaurs, like Asdarkids, could soar through the sky. Pterosaurs would also need to be very light, but they had hollow bones, which made this possible. Asdarkids and other pterosaurs were quadrupedal, Asdarkids having a more upright posture. Pterosaurs walked on their feet and hands for balance. It was proposed that as darkens were skim feeders, but this theory was quickly broken down. Their jaws were just not strong enough to endure the force. Then it was thought that they were scavengers, but their beaks weren't made for that lifestyle. Now we know that as darkens were probably hunters. They would hunt small and baby dinosaurs. Now, let's talk about the most famous of them all, Quetzalcoatlus. Quetzalcoatlus was an Asdarkid pterosaur from North America. It lived in the late Cretaceous period, from around 72 to 66 million years ago. Quetzalcoatlus had a wingspan of almost 11.5 meters making it the largest flying animal to ever exist. Just like all Asdarkids, Quetzalcoatlus had a toothless beak and a crest on the back of its head. Quetzalcoatlus was almost as tall as a modern-day giraffe. Quetzalcoatlus had two species, one being Q. Northropi and the other being unnamed. Quetzalcoatlus lived with famous dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus, Triceratops, and Ankylosaurus, but also with dinosaurs further to the north like Pachyrhinosaurus, 
Gorgosaurus and Edmontosaurus. Just like all pterosaurs, Quetzalcoatlus had pygnofibers, which are often compared to hair, but is actually more like feathers. Well, that was it for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye!